What up, guys? Man Viking Toy Channel. This is uh, basically just a news, wrestling news update. Uh, wrestling related, you know, the usual. Uh, a lot of stuff has happened. But this has been, some of it's old because I've been writing it down for the last couple of weeks. But um, I'm going to start off with uh, CM Punk's payday for U his UFC fight. Uh, he got paid pretty damn well. He made $500,000 guaranteed, plus a uh, profit of the pay-per-view, which hasn't been released yet. And he has the possibility of making at least another, uh, making over a million and a half dollars when it's all said and done. So, um, uh, I heard he was very good with his WWE money, and for all the people who are like, well, he lost, he'll never fight again. He might not fight in UFC again. He is under contract, and they haven't released him. Uh... I don't see UFC... UFC owns a bunch of other clubs. Uh, I don't see them releasing him. He was a pay-per-view popper. Uh, they're going to use him again somewhere down the road. I can guarantee you that. Uh, but uh, obviously, Punk won't be returning because he's broke to the WWE anytime soon. Um, Ryback. His name is out and about. Uh, for one, he's signed to Bellator MMA Fighting. I don't know if the UFC owns that, but I think they do. Could be wrong. But uh, another noticeable thing that he did recently was he went the way of the Warrior. And he gave a big F you to Vince in the WWE. He changed his name legally to Ryback. So you can refer to Ryback now as Ryback. <laughs> uh, tragedy here. This happened a little while ago, and I guess it wasn't really major news because I don't think he was wrestling or anything like that. But um, <clears throat> Ravishing Rick Rude's 19-year-old son died in a motorcycle accident. Uh, so there will be no future legacy or revival, I guess, of Ravishing of Rick Rude. Uh, he died in a motorcycle accident. I believe he rear-ended or collided into a semi-truck. It sucks. I don't even know, 19 years old, I mean, Rick Fruit's been dead since, like, I guess it would work out that way. That kid must have been an infant or just a toddler when his dad died, but, um, supposedly the WWE and Paige worked the differences out, and she was supposed to return a few weeks ago to do Raw. What's happened? Where was she? She wasn't on Raw, was she? No. There's rumors she's hurt, but hurt from what? She hasn't been wrestling in months. There's rumors that she needs surgery. Surgery from what? A broken heart. She's still with Del Rio, from what I get. Um, and I, what I read is they had her under contract for years. And I don't know how good her lawyers were, but she was reporting that she was leaving WWE and going to TNA. And then supposedly they kissed and made up. Because the WWE can, I think, own her for three years. Granted, Lesnar got out of it back in the day, but that took a lot of money and a lot of fighting. I mean, the WWE just can't own you like that. But she did sign off on a piece of paper. Um... And uh, they said even if they did bring her back, they had no future plans for her. So she's just going to ride a bench and probably get bullshit assignments like, hey, go sign some autographs at AutoZone or something like that. So, you know, she's not going to stay happy. A lot of us uh, know Ziggler uh, and that great promo with The Miz on uh, last SmackDown. He put his career up on the line. Um, and a lot of people are like, well, that means Dolph Ziggler is going to win, right? No, not necessarily. Ziggler's contract is coming up. Uh, I haven't heard any real thing about contract negotiations or re-signings. Uh, I've read he's possibly stepping away from the business for a while to make the WWE, like, you know, miss what they have type deal, you know. So he could possibly be losing and vanishing. And if he does, man, that's another blow coming to the WWE. Jericho's done after Hell in the Cell. Um... Uh, uh, there was a list. So Cesaro's potentially still leaving. Uh, you know, the 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 uh, the talent pool is getting thin. The WWE should be worrying, but no, don't. Well, we don't have to fear because Tamina Snuka's returning. Does anybody care? No, I don't. But whatever. She's been around for how many years? I don't even think she's ever even had a storyline. All she does is either job or she's someone's bodyguard. Um, I guess she could start fighting the other Samoan chick. 
I guess that could be uh, her doppelganger, Nina Jax. Um, there's a rumor Summer Rae was released. I've never seen another follow-up on it. Where it, you know exactly where is Summer Rae? <laughs> Nobody knows. So she might be gone. We don't know. Um, Emma's currently starting to get a beef with the WWE. Apparently, they're pulling a Daniel Bryan on her. She's been cleared by a handful of doctors to come back, and uh, that was over six weeks. Well, this would have been about seven or eight weeks ago. And she still hasn't been cleared to come back, and she's starting to get pissy. That I could maybe understand, because uh, when I reported that she got hurt, there was talk she was potentially going to be such a serious injury that she had to retire. And that was literally maybe two months ago. So either it wasn't that serious, or this girl's been on some, like, monkey steroids and HGH to get better. And she wants back as soon as possible to save her spot. I don't know. I don't get it. So maybe they're playing safe with her. I don't know. Um, oh, Awesome Kong. This is kind of disappointing. Is joining uh, Glow on Netflix. And if you don't know what Glow is, it was this kind of like circus trash ass style of female wrestling, like in the early, late 80s, early 90s. The only good thing that ever came out of Glow was um, Ivory, and that was about it. Uh, so Awesome Kong's probably going to run roughshod over that joint. Um, let, me, let me mark this to come back to. Oh, TNA is for sale, supposedly. Billy Corgan's trying to buy it. <coughs> but I read they're trying to sell it for $40 million. And I can guarantee you Billy Corgan does not have $40 million. He's a successful singer. Uh, he's not like a, a big spender or anything, so maybe he's got some money lying around, but I don't think he's got $40. Um, the WWE was trying to buy it, but all they wanted is the library. And maybe at least a small uh, handful of talents, which I'm sure would be like the Hardy Boys and maybe EC3 and Galloway. Maybe Lashley. Uh, but they weren't interested in keeping the company going. And I guess they lowballed TNA so badly that TNA just stopped talking to them. Because that's, for one, Dixie wants the company to keep thriving. Corgan's going to buy it if he buys it, and he's going to totally gut the company. He's going to give it a new look, new name, everything. So then that, in the essence, TNA will die, and something will come from its birth. But I'm kind of happy, because I don't want Vince to buy the shit. You know, I like my variety. And you got to remember how bad wrestling was when they killed WCW. It was no more ECW. Ring of Honor was just in its infancy. And it wasn't on TV. They were doing, like, internet pay-per-views and things like that matches. I mean, I don't want to go through that again. And I like TNA. They've been doing really good this last year. The ratings are up. It shows. They're only trying to sell because they are they owe from past failures. They're not bankrupt bouncing checks right now. They're bringing in talent. That's how they're, they're doing better than what people think they are. Uh, they're not trying to go out of business. They're just trying to keep going and get the debt off their head. Um, Owens demands less than at Mania. Well, get in line because so does Sting. Um, God, who did I just read yesterday was demanding less than at Mania too. Uh, even though that could be a good fight, but um, I would assume he would drop the title before Mania if he did, so it might not be something he wishes to do that hard. I think I might might run out, rather have a decent title reign before uh, dumping it off just to go lose the Lesnar. Potentially he could beat Lesnar. He's one of the guys in my eyes that could beat him. So could Shudamoa Joe. They made it to where Reigns survived him and could, was almost beating him. But uh, uh, I don't know. I, I wouldn't mind seeing that. I kind of I wish I went. I just read this yesterday and I can't remember who just called Undertaker out. Uh, oh, it was Bobby Lashley. So maybe it's uh, maybe he's trying to jump ship like a rat and trying to get his get attention. Uh, 
Jericho going after Hell in the Cell. I already said that. Uh, the Tardies, the Tardies, the Hardies were recently talking about a WWE return. They're both open to it. Jeff wants more of a relaxed contract. He doesn't want to work 300 and something days a year, and I don't freaking blame him. The WWE should be more open to that. Uh, they could sign, I'm sure, a lot more veterans. That's what RVD wants, and uh, they they did want to. That was another thing. Uh, I'll skip to that though. <coughs> Matt would say, Jeff said he would come back, but he would only come back if the schedule was good to him, and of course the money was right. Matt said he's not sure because he doesn't think the WWE would be committed to broken Matt Hardy, meaning like the promo time, airspace time to be Matt. And I agree with that. They'd do it for a little bit, and they'd get sick of it after a month. And then Matt would just be broken Matt walking to the ring, fighting whoever he fights. But um, I think they'll bring them back. Something will get worked out because they're obviously going to be entered in the Hall of Fame at some point. Uh, and the WWE wants them, I'm sure, uh, you know, under the WWE banner when it happens. Uh, of course, what was it? Was is Bound for Glory Teenage last pay per view? There was no talk of TNA closing at the pay-per-view. It was business as usual. And it was a pretty good pay-per-view. It was long, though. Boy, it was long. Whew, it was SummerSlam long. Um, mm -mm. Oh, Katie De Cody Rhodes debuted on TNA, Bound for Glory. That's right. Uh, with his wife, who was also signed to a contract. She's now a female knockout. And they instantly got into a beef with the Bennetts, and they scruffed. So that's going to be interesting. Cody Rhodes is in Ring of Honor, TNA, New Japan. That's the way to do it, man. Screw the WWE. Your name. You can make just as much money wrestling for Ring of Honor one night making fifteen, eighteen thousand dollars $18,000. Wrestle next weekend somewhere else, do it the same. And you're not killing yourself. So, you know, c congrats to Cody, man. Um, I already talked about that. Prince Puma. From the CWC tournament, he I read he was actually signed to a contract. There was six cruiserweights signed, uh, <coughs> but apparently now there's only five. So now he managed to maybe he didn't sign his contract. <coughs> maybe he was just signed to the CWC, but they just assumed they had him signed. I don't know how that worked out, but he passed. And he said, "Now's not the time for me to be in the WWE. I don't think it'd be my fit. I want to keep wrestling." around the world, uh, and building my brand. So, hey, I can't, I can't knock him. Um, but Pinch Puma, for those who don't know, was Ricochet on the indie scene. Uh, this one really hurts my soul. Because, man, did I have a man boner for this chick. Um, Sarah Lee. The last... Uh, what was a tough enough champion winner next to the Yeti guy, whatever his name is. I've only seen that guy once in NXT shows. But she's been released from NXT. Um, there was never really any reason given for it. No explanation other than NXT, Sarah Lee, no longer coexist. Um, one big factor behind it could possibly be because... Uh, Douchebag Blake from Blake and Murphy announced on his Twitter that he knocked her up and she's now pregnant. So, do I think after nine months, a year from now, will Sarah Lee be re signed? I don't know. I'm sure the WWE is a little pissed they've put this much time into her and she gets knocked up. Um, but then again, all it really cost her, I guess, was her contract that she won 250 grand. But I can guarantee you a lot of those NXT guys are not making $250,000 a year. So, uh, that does piss me off, though. My little pay, my little Sara Lee is no more. Um, and two big shocking things here. Alberto Del Rio missed his show in Mexico last night. He no-showed, and the promoters just shit all over him. Uh, basically calling him a piece of shit because they put the, the people in the town... Support him, and they paid money to be there. I mean, it's, he's not known for no showing, but this guy just shit all over him. Well, then it came out today that Alberto Del Rio was having dinner somewhere before the show, and when he left, 
he was attacked by a knife-wielding maniac in Mexico. And he fought back. And there's pictures on WrestleZone, WrestleFest, the guy, the English guy on YouTube. He's got actual, actual pictures, man. This guy sliced his arm, man, down to the white meat, as they say. It was just gushing out, flesh hanging out. Slice, 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 slice. He was cut on the top of his head. Uh, both arms, he was supposed to have been stabbed in the torso. And this crazy mother effer is like, hey, man, I can't wrestle tonight. When he finally got to the promoters. But he's like, I'll be, around, I'll be able to wrestle at the next show. Well, fuck it. Your bone is showing. So you gotta let that shit heal. You don't have to be a champ like that, man. Uh, and another person who got stabbed this week, shockingly as well, Jamie Noble. First I read he was coming home from a WWE show, driving back to his trailer park community. Yes, you heard that right. That wasn't a storyline back today. Apparently he lives in a trailer park. Well, the first story was that he was being followed. There was some type of a road rage incident, and the car kept following him and following him, following him all the way back to his place. But before he got back to his place, Jamie threw the car into park, jumped out. One guy jumped out. They started scrapping, and they were wrestling, rolling around. And then two more guys jumped out of the car and started sticking him like a you know, a honey, uh, honey baked ham. Uh, he wasn't supposedly wasn't critically injured or anything, but he took quite a quite a. I think they said like ten stabbings. So I mean, I, I'm assuming they were just jabbing him because if you know ten stabbings compared to ten you know jabbings is a little bit different. So that was two wrestling superstars in the last week getting stabbed. And so man, people are crazy. And they want to take away our guns. That's a reason for CC's uh, concealed carry right there, buddy. Well, granted, I guess if he was that, if the guy was on top of him and his buddies jumped out of the car, you probably don't have a real good shot of grabbing your gun. But still, I probably would have felt a lot safer jumping out of my car with my gun and those guys would have driven off. But whatever. Now I'm getting all gun crazy. Um, so for now... Like I said, I watched Bound for Glory. I want to do a review on it just in case if it was TNA's last pay-per-view. You know, I enjoyed TNA over the years. I wouldn't mind reflecting on some of my memories. I don't know if it's the end. I don't think it's the end. It's not the end right now, anyway. And I, Like I said, I hope it's not, but I did watch the pay-per-view, and I couldn't believe they were charging 50 bucks for it. But like I said, that was a long, I want to say effing pay-per-view. Um, no, Ashley... Who did he fight? I can't even remember. Lashley. Who was he supposed to be fighting? Moose? That doesn't sound right, no. I just what? I watched it this morning when I came home after a night of being out, let's just say. So, my mind's clogged. What the hell did he fight? <laughs> well, whatever. The fight was good. It was so good, I can't remember who he fought. The Decay-Hardy Boy match was phenomenal. It was ridiculous. Oh, shit. Yeah, I think I already said that in the other video. But you can find a lot of these matches on YouTube already. So, which kind of sucks. I want TNA to make some money, but they got 50 bucks out of me. Maybe it's my last donation to the house of TNA. But, um, I don't know. That's it for now. I'm starting to ramble. If I do a Bound for Glory review, I don't know. It might be up today. It might be up tomorrow. The longer I wait, the less likelihood it's going to be done because, you know, I doubt I'll get 10 views because it's already two days after the fact of the pay-per-view. So, But anyway, if that's it. You like what you saw, smash that like button, leave a comment, uh, subscribe, tell your friends, come back for more, all that yada, 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 yada. Uh, like I said, peace. I'm out for now.